So as we drift through this kind of nightmare of the unending images of genocide in Gaza, I want to once again talk in a very, very specific way about how we represent violence, the specific language we use to identify very particular things, everyday things, um, and to look at the way in which that language creates worlds. And it can create worlds that either feel supportive or worlds that feel like they are attacking us. It can incite us to, to um, support people or to feel hostility towards people. But I want to just look at a very um, small example. It's a little quote. Um, uh, and this quote comes from uh, the... Uh, um, colonial ruler of Palestine from 1969 to 1974, or if you prefer, from a colonial perspective, the fourth prime minister of Israel, uh, Golda Meir. Um, and here's the quote. It's incredibly interesting uh, phrasing, um, and I want us to look very carefully at, at what's inside these few words. So this is it. We can forgive the Arabs for killing our children, but we cannot forgive them for forcing us to kill their children. We will only have peace with the Arabs when they love their children more than they hate us. So on the one hand, a political propaganda statement of the kind that is in the media every day. Uh, on the other hand, an account of a experience of the world, of an understanding of the world, that, and, and one that both represents that version of the world, but also propagates that version of the world, that also tries to conscript other people into seeing it in that way and sharing that understanding. So let's break it down um, into component parts to see if we can take them apart. Um, and and to understand a bit of this, we, 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 we need to understand, um, Golda May was a, was a um, Ukrainian American who uh, moved to Palestine um, long before the formation of the State of Israel um, and witnessed um, and was distressed by um, some of the events of the Nakba. She, she, she witnessed part of the, um, of the, the mass murder of, of Palestinians, the destruction of their homes, the ethnic cleansing uh, and theft of their land. And she was quite distressed by it for a very specific reason. That to her, it reminded her of the experience of um, of the Jews uh, in Europe uh, in the Holocaust. Um, so she needed to do a kind of work to differentiate the violence um, that was being conducted against Palestinians from the violence that was um, conducted against Jews uh, in Europe. And I think this really helps us understand the, the very weird psychological machinations that are taking place in this quote. So the first, the first opening statement, we can forgive, immediately positions two groups of people and us and them. And the us is, are, are the forgivers. We are the good people. We're the people who do the emotional work of of, of being moral, of being noble, of being decent. Um, and the work of forgiveness, that, 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 that's a heavily kind of theologically loaded word, the idea that, 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 that bad things are happening, but also the forgiveness immediately sets the us, the we, up as the people who are the victims. So we forgive bad things that are being done to us, okay? Um, and so immediately you've got an us and them. You've got a, a, a good for, good forgivers versus a bad uh, other group of people who are doing the stuff that needs to be forgiven. Um, we can forgive the Arabs. Now, the word Arabs here is, is doing a huge amount of work. Um, and it's easy to gloss over it. I mean, we all know who she's talking about. Um, 
But what is the word Arabs doing? Well, firstly, the word Arabs is a very, very careful substitution for the more accurate word, which is Palestinians. And this is an essential part of the kind of um, Hasbro propaganda system, is to raise the, the use of the word Palestinians and to always replace it within the Israeli education system, within the Israeli media, within Israeli political speech, to, to, to erase the very idea of Palestinians and 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 construct this other group, Arabs. Um, and this this is this is confirmed in another of her notorious quotes, where in an interview she once said there was no such thing as Palestinians. And the the insertion of the word Arabs there into that claim is doing the work of that there is no such thing as Palestinians. And if there's no because there the, the, the need to be no such thing as Palestinians, because if there's no such thing as Palestinians, then what then the conflict that is taking place is not a colonial occupation. It's not the theft of houses. It's not the theft of land. It's not the ethnic cleansing of an ind indigenous people because there were, there, there were no Palestinians. It was in the um, language of, of Australian colonization, it was terra nullius. It was empty land. Um, so, the, the 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 first work of the word Arabs is to erase the the actual term uh, Palestinians, but it's also to construct an, an 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 another whole field. So it's not just um, Palestine; it's the fact that Israel becomes in opposed to to Arabs becomes a very small island in a very big hostile region. You know there are many many. Arab countries surrounding Israel, and so so the so so, so the idea of of Arabs coalesces all these different countries, all these political systems, all these um, internal um, religions, all these internal divisions within the major religions. It 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 just collapses all of those into kind of a generalized a horde, a generalized swarm of other people. And it creates the sense of being a small and vulnerable uh, space against this the, 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 this overwhelming sea. And 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 a lot of sort of scholars of of fascism have have talked about this um, this the, this the, this anxiety of being engulfed by the sea. You can see it in Klaus Terwilleit's male fantasies and and other works. Um, the other thing that the word Arabs done, uh, does, in addition to raising Palis, uh, Palestinians, uh, in addition to creating this um, this the, 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 this small vulnerable space in this in this big hostile sea, is to construct a this idea of a clash of religions. Uh, is to to construct um, Arabness uh, as conflated with um, Islam. And 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 the other really important colonial work of conflating the colonial state of Israel with the religion of Judaism, and so it sets up this this clash of um, of, of 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 Judaism with, versus Islam, um, and that is incredibly important. Setting this setting the, up this whole scenario as being a religious antagonism is absolutely vital to 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 sustain a certain kind of worldview um which is the worldview um of the um continuous historical persecution of the jews so what is happening here is um is is is, is yet another yet another historical moment of the the persecution of the jews it does really, really interesting work, which is which is vital. Um, is that it that it it then erases the entire history of of, of Arab multiculturalism. Um, it erases the history of coexistence of Jews, Christians, and Muslims in the Middle East and North Africa. Um, it, it 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 completely raises that and replaces it with another history, the Western history of of um, persecution of Jewish people, which is essentially the the Ashkenazi um, history of 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 Jewish people, um, a history of of constant persecution in Europe, 
um, of being um, expelled from, from Britain around 1200, of being expelled from um, Spain and Portugal around 1500. Um, and and this just this relentless hundreds and hundreds of years of 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 Europe of European persecution of European Jews, um, uh, finally leading up to the to the to the Holocaust, the 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 final kind of end game of the attempt to completely annihilate and erase European Jews. Um, but what 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 gets erased here is the history of all other Jews and all other societies in which they live. Um, specifically, the 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 by by elevating the Ashkenazim, the history of persecution in Europe, uh, and erasing the Mizrahi history um, of of coexistence in the Middle East. The, the long history of Middle, Middle Eastern Jews living um, uh, relatively easily in multicultural um, Islamic societies where, um, where anti-Semitism was, was, was not a major force in those societies. So, so, the, so the, the European invention of anti-Semitism has to strategically get remapped onto the Middle East, onto this idea of Arabs who are then constructed as 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 being the new bearers of uh, the anti-Semitism that 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 was historically a feature of the of the West, not of not of North African and Middle Eastern societies. Um, and to raise the history of um, cultural coexistence. That was uh, uh, um, the, char the characteristic of, of Middle Eastern life. Um, and to reframe the opposition to the um, colonization and ethnic cleansing of Palestine, not as a colonization and ethnic cleansing, but as an, as a, as an eruption of anti-Semitic hatred. So the word Arab there is 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 doing all of that. It's erasing Palestine. It's erasing Palestinians. It's erasing the Mizrahi history of multiculturalism. It's 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 uh, co-opting European anti-Semitism, um, and 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 then reinscribing uh, resistance to to dispossession, resistance to ethnic cleansing, as if it were part of the tradition of. Of Western anti-Semitism. So that's a lot for a single word to be doing. Then the the rest of the pra the phrase um, we 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 forgive them. What are we forgiving them for? We forgive them for ki for killing our children. Okay, this is incredibly important. And 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 the and the phrase killing our children really has a new resonance since the misinformation campaigns around the um, the the attacks of the 7th of October, because an important part of the of, of the initial um, propaganda around those attacks was that they involved, you know, beheading of babies, putting babies in ovens. And so there was this kind of visceral international scandal that was created by these accounts of 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 of, of staggering inhuman violence. Um, uh, such that even once it had been established that that was that those were just all absolute misinformation, no basis in reality. Um, the the emotion had already set the 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 emotional tone of the idea of how um, the decolonial resistance should be perceived, and and so and and that got sort of reified into the reflex of 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 this insistent. Um, uh, phrase: Do you condemn Hamas? The, that to enter into any dialogue, you had to accept the fictitious terms of this mythical, um, brutal moment um, of the killing of children, um, and of course, the killing of children then signifies the ultimate form of inhumanity. That within, you know, Queensbury rules, within the purported decency of the West, you know, the gentlemen go to war, um, and they and they fight by the rules of war. But 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 savages kill children, and as I've spoken about before, this is really then a a, a huge part of the colonial master narrative 
which is that the indigenous people are primarily defined by their savagery, by by their by by their propensity for violence, their lack of um, civilized standards, morality, humanity, um, and that the colonizers themselves are the ones who introduce uh, uh, humanitarian ways of thinking, introduce the idea that children are not simply to be to be killed. Um, which, of course, is an inversion of the actual process of colonization. It's the process of colonization that involves the the mass murder, the the the, the genocides. Um, but that inversion, the 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 erasure of the violence of the colonizer by the construction of the savagery of the native, is 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 really the the core foundation on which all colonial narratives are are built. So invoking this idea of killing our children is not about the, the facts of what took place. I mean, the, uh, um, in the Nakba, in the decolonial resistance, um, the, the, these were not features, um, these were not historical moments where, where the primary characteristic was, was the killing of children. Um, but 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 that has to be they have to be made to be about that kind of excess that kind of brutality in order to conceal what is actually taking place, um, in order to conceal that this is actually a a a political battle, a political and military battle between colonizers and and colonized people. Um, so the the. The, the this idea of 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 killing our children um really inserts um the 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 understanding of what's happening both in terms of the long tradition of colonial propaganda and and mystification and it and it and resonates with this this sort of contemporary um uh misinformation misrepresentation of the events of october 7. um it er erases the the extreme violence of the occupation. It erases the kind of history of Zionist terrorist violence even before the formation of the State of Israel, where terrorist groups such as Hachana, uh, Ergen, uh, Lehi um, were 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 attacking and killing um, Palestinian civilians, uh, driving them out of their homes, seizing their land, and and really. Beginning the the process of ethnic cleansing with the you know the fifteen thousand murders the um, the 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 displacement of three quarters of a million people out of Palestine by these um, in, um, Zionist terrorist groups and then later by the occupying army. Um, so the so 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 the so the work of the phrase of killing our children. Is does both that that invocation of savagery and that erasure of colonial violence, and then we get to the what is really the core of this statement. Okay, I'm going to read you the whole statement again so that we can we can we can just understand what's going on. We can forgive the Arabs for killing our children. We cannot forgive them for forcing us to kill their children. Okay. So here we get to um, the, the 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 forcing us to to kill their children. This seems to be one of the most interesting um, discursive aspects of 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 this little quote, um, and this is something that's really familiar to people who work in violent studies and and has been theorized extensively. Um, this the, the the this mechanism that is going on here. Um, by people who, who work in intimate partner violence, because what's interesting is we see we see this very um, repeated mechanisms across um, child abuse, intimate violence, uh, violence between social groups, large scale political violence, violence be between countries. We see um, we, we 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 see a, a set of of kind of rhetorical moves, a set of discursive strategies used by aggressors against their victims. Um, and um, the psychologist Jennifer Freyd um, has, has, has coined this um, acronym DAVO, D-A-R-V-O, um, for, 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 for this triple strategy. 
uh, D-A-R-V-O, DAVO, standing for Deny, Attack, Reverse Victim and Offender. Okay. And this and 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 the and and this DAVO strategy is the is the kind of the, the integral um element of, of gaslighting where the experience of the victim is erased and in its place a falsified account of the position of the of the violent aggressor um is created. Um so what 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 happens here is the forcing us to kill their children positions the aggressor as the victim. We are not killing their children. They are forcing us to kill their children. We don't want to kill their children. We have no desire to kill their children. They are making us kill their children. And in that, the aggressor describes themselves as the victim, that the, that 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 the colonized people are making us murder their children because they won't abandon their houses they won't flee from their land they won't they won't go into exile without resistance and because they refuse to do that because be, 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 because they refuse to disappear from history be, because they refuse to annihilate themselves they make us be violent towards them in order to annihilate them in order to ethnically cleanse the land that we want to steal in order to commit uh, acts of genocide, in order to 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 take this place over and make it our own, um, so the 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 aggression of the perpetrator then gets allocated to 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 the to to the fact that the victim is being incalcitrant. The victim is continuing to be a human being. The victim is continuing to aspire to human rights. The victim is continuing to, 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 to want to continue existing at all. And, 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 and that, that aspiration to exist is, is then experienced. And, and I use the word experience violently. It's not advisedly. It's not, it's, it's, it's not just in, presented in cynical gaslighting terms, often it is genuinely experienced by the by the aggressor as a provocation. Um, and we see this in intimate violence, the classic sort of state, the, 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 uh, the archetypal statement of, of intimate violence, why do you make me so angry? This is, this is the kind of the core to understanding uh, the psychology of intimate violence is in that statement is, is is that the perpetrator accuses the victim of provoking them. Why do you make me hit you? Um, and we hear this all the time in intimate violence scenarios. Is why do you make me hit you? Why do you make me so angry? Um, so the complete disowning of agency, the complete disowning of cruelty, the complete disowning of initiation of violence from the perpetrator and the allocation of the cause of violence to the victim. Um, and and this is all at work. So this is this is the core element of DAVO of deny, attack, reverse victim and offender that is inside the 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 phrase forcing us to kill their children. Okay. Then we move, then we move um, onto the 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 last part of the quote, which is we will only have peace when the Arabs. Okay. We will only have peace when the Arabs. So 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 everyone. You know, any reasonable person wants peace, but the peace is being obstructed by the Arabs. We, as the, we the colonizers, we want peace. It's 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 the it's it's the it's the people being colonized who don't want it. Um, and 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 once again, this is this this is a reiteration of the Davo. Uh, we will only have peace with the Arabs when. Like when the Arabs do something, when they stop making us angry, when they stop wanting to be human, when they want, when they stop wanting to exist in 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 their on their indigenous land, um, it's only when they stop doing all these things um, that that we can have the peace which we want. Um, and this this then interlocks with a, a with with a whole other huge propaganda system which 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 is evidenced in for instance these 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 incessant lies about it being 
of the Palestinians who rejected the two-state solution, that Israel repeatedly offered a two-state solution. Palestinians rejected it. Um, and this is a, you know, a, a, a kind of serial gaslighting um, uh, which is designed to obscure the fact that 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 in fact the two-state solution was always sabotaged on the colonial side by refusing to grant ordinary autonomy to the state of Israel. It was never there was never a two-state solution on the table. There was a there was a a, a, a one-state solution with partially um, a highly limited uh, aut um, autonomy of 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 areas that were completely controlled, completely excluding the right of the people who had been ethnically cleansed from those lands to return, while granting the right of anyone associated with, with the colonial group to, to, um, to, to, to take on the colonized land as their own homeland. Um, so, so, so once again, we have the Davo mechanism. Um, we have the idea that the Arabs are withholding peace by their perverse uh, um, um, obstruction of the reasonable desire for them to vanish from history. And then the final part of the, the phrase is we will only have peace with the Arabs when they love their children more than they hate us. This is a, an extraordinary phrase. I mean, it's just, I mean, there's a sense that we're dealing with a kind of psychosis um, in the utterance of this phrase. The idea that, that, that in fact what this conflict hinges on is that the Arabs hate more than they love. And that's the feature that defines them. And of course, here we loop back to this is the this is the very foundational colonial myth: is that the indigenous people, the natives, are characterized by savagery, brutality, and civilization, inhumanity, um, and and this idea that 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 the Arabs are are motivated by hate, not and uh, not by love. Um, is is absolutely central and and this is and and we see this played out in a very very specific aspect of the propaganda war which was the, is the hollywood construction of the arab terrorists this is the decades of of um of kind of constructing of the representation um of 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 middle eastern people in terms of the idea of the of 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 the terrorist someone who is who is perversely motivated by the di uh, by the cruel desire to 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 terrorize other people to inflict cruelty and uh, and fear on them and so the construction of the of the arab terrorist is is absolutely central in the creation of 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 this mythology, and this is also part of the work being done by the erasure of the the the, the term Palestinian as replacement by the term Arab, um, because then it can cover this this entire specter of of this this constructed figure of the Arab terrorist, and this is why uh, um, Benjamin Netanyahu's reaction when he first heard about nine eleven. Um, was not an uh, expression of horror, was not an expression of sympathy for the people who'd been killed in that attack. His reaction was, this is very good news for us, because that attack could be used to really solidify this account of, of, of Arabs as, as violence. Um, and... Um, once again, we're trapped inside this 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 foundational colonial mythology um, that colonizers are decent people who love their children. Uh, colonized people are barbarian savage, savages, um, and this is why uh, this is why we cannot have a um, democracy. This is why the colonizers can't simply coexist in an ordinary uh, democratic society um, with the, um, the, the, the people whose land they're occupying because the indigenous people hate them so much. The indigenous people are, are, are so overwhelmed by hatred for them 
that it overrides any human instincts in them, even the most the most basic fundamental of all human capacities for empathy, which is the empathy to be able to care for your own children. Okay. So so as we see, there's a there's a huge amount going on in the in this tiny little statement. Um, it it both expresses a worldview. It expresses the, the this 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 colonial mentality of existing in a state of siege against a a, a hostile sea of barbarians. It it does the colonial gaslighting of erasing the violence of the colonial state. Uh, it even it, it even erases the existence of the colonized people who are being ethnically cleansed. Um, and and so it cr creates this alternate reality, this kind of this deranged reality, this this sort of psychotic world that is completely delinked from the actual historical processes that are taking place. It does exactly the Davo work. It 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 denies the violence. Um, it attacks the victims, and it inverts the relation of the aggressor and the victim making the resistance of the victims appear to be uh, a, an act of violence that simply provides us evidence of the violent nature of those who are, who are, who are resisting colonization. And that evidence of their violent nature then, then is used to justify, firstly, why we cannot coexist with them in a democratic society, and secondly, why we have to exercise annihilating violence against them. Why, why in Golda May's word, why we, we are forced to kill their children. Um, because if we don't kill their children, um, we will not be able to exist in safety. I.e., if we don't kill their children, we will not be able to have exist in the peace of a fully ethnically cleansed people land, uh, a land where where the complete genocide of the indigenous people is so if is so so totally executed that there is no resistance to confront us with the history of our own violence. And we can live in this in in in, in this post-devastation world of peace. 